Good morning, friends, and welcome to Monday, March 29th. Thanks to James Montney to start us off with In the Garden. Monday's devotion is from the Upper Room Disciplines, written by Rachel Hackenberg, and our scripture this morning is Isaiah 42, 1 through 9. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him, and he will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry out or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teachings." Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who preached out the earth and what comes for it from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind and to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things now I declare. I tell you of them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Death is coming. We notice it in the signs and in the sources of Lent and the stories of Lent. We feel it in the pleas of the Psalms. We brace ourselves for it in the building drama of Holy Week. Death is coming, but death takes its definition from life. Without an experience of life, death loses its relevance. And without a vision for the life that was and the life that could be, the tragedies of life as is lack urgency. If we do not remember the summer and hope for the spring, we might make peace with the frozen grave of winter. In the wake of death and the devastation of the Babylonian exile, Isaiah reminds the exiled people of interminable life. The promise of life after exile is made by the same God who first gave the people life and breath. The temporary death of their freedom cannot overcome the life already given and still to come. And the hope of a leader who will cultivate justice is extended by the same God who unfurled the earth so it could bear fruit. The promise of a beacon to relieve despair is made by the same God who stretched out stars across the heavens. Death and darkness cannot extinguish them. Death's poison cannot taint life's growth. Yes, there has been death, sings the prophet, but remember the breadth and the beauty of life. Remember the holy wildness from which life sprang, sprouted. Remember freedom that beckons even from a dimly burning lamp. Remember the promise that God holds and keeps us. Yes, death is coming this holy week, but remember that God's love is already stretched out to the heavens. God's faithfulness is already whispered between the clouds like perfume poured out extravagantly over dusty feet. God has poured the fullness of life across our dusty selves with the promise that more life is still to come.
Let us pray. For these reasons, O God, we praise you even when death approaches. For these reasons, we celebrate the abundance of life already given and look forward to the beauty that awaits us. Amen. Our closing hymn is Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream, flows from Calvary's mountain. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. Be blessed this day as you experience life without a death. Amen.